Okay, hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I am just going to do a very quick overview and this is really just designed for people who, like me, are beginners to software like Nina. And I've been using it for a couple of months now and really this is just going to be a quick overview of Nina if you're not used to the interface basically. Um, okay, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm just going to select one of the two profiles I have set up and let's go and have a look at Nina. Okay, so first things first, what I would probably do is I would start off um, in options and this is where you can set up all of your equipment. So Nina works with profiles so you can have as many profiles as you want and then all of these options that you have along here will basically save to whichever profile. Now I've got two telescopes so I've got a profile for each telescope and that's all I have at the moment and um, so what you can do is give your profile a name um, and then let's have a look at what other options so if you want to give it a color scheme you can down here you've got which hemisphere and you can set your latitude and longitude that's pretty much all you need to do in that screen um, under equipment this is where you can specify a name for your telescope and you can give it its focal length and its focal ratio. This will be useful for things like plate solving. Also your camera here, pixel size, um, bit depth, that kind of thing. Also over here is your PhD2 settings. Now I have a feeling it may have auto detected this when I set this up originally, I can't quite remember. But if not, you can just specify the path here to your guider settings. Um, I've specified Stellarium as my planetarium software, but I really don't use it to be honest in Nina very much. Um, then it's got some focuser settings here, and you can basically also choose how you want it to go about its autofocus routine. Um, in terms of the autofocus routine, for anybody new, um, I'd recommend a guy called Patria Astro. He's got a YouTube channel. And he has a really good video on how to set up a ZWO autofocuser, which I found very useful using this overshoot method. So I'll not go into that, but that's a, um, a source that I would recommend. If you're using a filter wheel, you can also set up um, focus offsets and stuff here, but I don't have a filter wheel. Um, next tab, imaging. You can choose how you want it to save your files, what format. You can also choose your file path and then you can also choose a pattern of how you what you want your file names to be constructed of so in this case it's got my target name here the date and time it's even got the sensor temperature which i didn't realize i had on um, yeah so you can construct that from um, these options down below and add whatever you want into those names um, you've got an auto meridian flip option which I find works really well and um, that's worked every time for me so far and um, this is just to do with the preview when you're taking images and you can also choose where you want your sequences to save to we'll go into sequences soon but that's pretty much that screen next screen plate solving so I would recommend here just setting up um, ASTAP for your plate solver um, you can download that into a location and then let um, Nina know where it is um, and then basically I've set up my plate solver and my blind solver to um, as tap I find it's the best one it's very quick very reliable and that's pretty much it so that's probably where you would start and once you're happy you can then save that as a profile and maybe create as many profiles as you like depending on your telescope and uh, camera combinations. So where you would normally start here obviously when you start up Nina is you would go through this equipment tab here on the left 
and then it's got all the different types of equipment that you'd be connecting so you know you'd select your camera and then you basically just click this connect button here and it's going to come up with a couple of options to start cooling and that kind of thing um, and basically you just go down these so in my case I'm connecting my camera you know I'm switching connect for my focuser my uh, telescope and um, my guide software PhD2 so that's what I would normally do and that's you really just use that once when you're starting up um, next tab down is we've got a sky atlas so um, if you're looking something up this is where um, you would type that in and um, if you're trying to select a target um, especially useful obviously for things like plate solving it's also got your moon illumination here and your dawn sunset sunrise a few little basic details there so for example if I type in helix here and um, I've got the helix nebula it's going to tell you here um, when it's going to be transiting and its elevation um, so this is really handy what I would normally do here is you could then set it for framing to see how it's going to be framed depending on of course which object you want or you could slew directly to it so if we just set that for our framing assistant so it's actually automatically gone to the next tab here down from sky atlas which is framing what I can do is just fit this image by using this button and then from here you could actually frame this um, work out how you want it to be framed I don't have an actual rotator but you can work out from taking some test shots um, exactly how you're gonna want it framed and you can also set up mosaics here and you can actually add these um, as a sequence so it would actually add four sequences one for each mosaic and it would do them sequentially I've never used that but it looks quite good um, it's got your camera parameters in here which is taken from your your profile originally so here what I would probably do next um, and like I said this is just designed as a, a basic overview of kind of how you would go about using Nina just for beginners um, I would add this as a sequence target so if we click add as a sequence target again it's automatically taken me down to the sequence tab here and the way that this sequence tab works is that you have your targets here along the top and then you have the sequences that you want within that target here so as you can see down here I can add a new row to this sequence list um, or I can change the order of them I can even save this particular sequence if I wanted to use it again and in the same way across the top I have a set of targets so I can add as many targets as I like as well so what's going to happen is it's going to go to your first target and then it's going to go down your sequences so for example if I had another sequence here put in how many I want let's say I want five minutes um, and I want a total of um, 20 of those um, I want this is an important one as well make sure you put um, <laughs> dithering on because that's off by default it's going to show you what your gain and offset is here you've currently got set um, so yeah you can also here see it um, set if you would like a delay you can tell it to start guiding when it begins the sequence you can tell it to slew to the target when it um, starts the sequence and you can tell it to center that target when it starts the sequence so all of these things are gonna whether or not you want to actually start these or enable these on the beginning of a sequence um, so basically that's going to start PhD2 off guiding and um, that's going to use plate solving to slew to your target and that's going to make sure it's centered okay so if I wanted to add another target here so basically it's going to go through this sequence and then it would go on to the next target what I could do is I could just say here add a new empty target sequence so as you can see it just says target at the moment I could go back to my sky atlas I could choose this galaxy this pancake galaxy here and I could go set as a sequence target as you can see it's now changed my second target to that helix galaxy 
There is also another option in that if I didn't want to just add one here, like by clicking this, I could actually just go back to the framing assistant as well, providing I'd loaded this into the frame and I can say add as a sequence target. That would also add a new one to the end. So if I, for example, just click to this now, you can see what it's done is it's got the original one I added, it's got the galaxy and then it's got this nebula again on the end. Um, doesn't seem to actually have in the sky atlas an option to just say um, add as a new sequence target, it's just set as a sequence target. Um, but anyway, there's a couple of ways of doing that. It's pretty easy to work out once you're used to it. So if we go back here, I'm just going to get rid of that target for now. We can see we've got these two targets. Um, let's say we add um, some more time to this one. Uh, let's just do 10 of those. So we've got, basically we've got two rows in this sequence. And on our first target, we've got three rows. So we can have a look what it's telling us. It's basically saying it's gonna go from 441 and it's going to go to um, 813 and you can see what it tells us here is on this target so this first target it's going to go from 4041 to 635 and then of course if I go to my next one it's going to tell me here it's going to go from 635 to 813 so it's basically telling you the individual target and then it's telling you the total time for all of these targets to complete. So I actually think this is quite a nice feature, the way that this is constructed. Um, again, it will tell you some details here about the objects that you're currently on. Um, you can see there. Um, and what I can also do is, if I'm going to be doing this over multiple nights, I can just save this as a target set. So if I go save, as you can see there, I've got a few target sets in here. You just save that in there as a new target set. And then the next night when you come in, you can basically just click on load and load up your target set. So I think that's quite nicely done. I also like this feature here. So you've got this autofocus feature and you can tell it to autofocus on the beginning of a target. What I often do is I just put it on to um, 60 minutes and I'll say, I'll switch that on and I'll say after 60 minutes, just run an autofocus routine. Um, but yeah, this whole sequence in panel, I think is, is quite nicely done and well laid out. Okay, so next one, we can have a quick look at imaging. This is kind of where you'll spend most of your time. Um, so there's a whole series of this is a little bit confusing to begin with, but basically there's a whole series of buttons up here that you can click. And what they'll do is they'll add tabs to these windows. And you can also then just dock these tabs yourself. So you can pull a tab out from one and you can actually add it and you can sort of move all these windows around. So if I click on this focuser window, I could move this around to a different spot completely. Um, or I can dock it where I had it there. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you want to view your windows um, and what you want to view and what you want, what you don't want to view. Um, so what I would recommend is just go through these and work out which ones you're going to use the most often. For me, it's generally going to be things like um, the imaging tab is, of course, um, one that you're going to use a lot. This is where you can just manually set an exposure time and get it to take a picture. Um, HFR history is good because that'll to tell you how your um, focusing is going and it'll tell you how many stars it can see. So it's kind of nice just to track your image through the night. Um, if you don't have an autofocuser, this took me a little while to figure out, but there's this manual focus targets here. So if I click on that, you'll see it's added this tab here to the bottom. And this is good if you need to get a star to focus on. So in my case, for example, I would use Acrux quite a lot. And what you can do is you can select that and you can select slew to that target. And it just means that you can then um, 
obviously with a baton off mask you've got something to focus on so that's a, that's a good one to have just for those of you that need to manually focus has got a baton off analyzer here it's okay I've used it a bit um, you'll also probably use this tab quite a lot so if you've slewed to a target and it's not centered I generally just come in here and if you click on this um, go button here which is like a play icon that'll usually center that target for you sometimes I even use this um, plate solving icon even when um, I've gone to slew from my sky atlas and it's not dead center and I'll come into imaging and go to plate solving and then just use that to make sure it's centered again all of these tabs you'll find them by just clicking up here and you'll notice that it'll, it'll add a tab to the bottom here um, again the image tab you'll use a lot because this is where you'll actually see the preview of the image that it's taken so generally you know I have the image in here um, you'll generally want to fit the image to the area that you've got because it'll be too big um, if you are using this HFR history you'll want to have this um, ticked this is um, basically this does the star detection and measures the HFR so this needs to be on in order for it to plot on this HFR history that took me a while to also figure out um, camera so you can have some details on your camera in there if you want to have that and um, I've got my focuser as you can see in here as well if you need to manually move it you can statistics will give you some stats on your your image again what your average HFR is things like that and um, so this is where you'll spend most of your time basically um, and basically it's just a case of working out how you want this whole window this imaging window here to be set up there's a myriad of ways and everybody has it different I have the guider here you can see down at the bottom and um, that's this tab here so if I click that off you can see that disappears and if I click it back on I think by default it just adds it into one of these windows so what I've actually done is what you can do is you can pick that up hold it and then you'll see it comes up with this these various places to to dock the tab so what I've done is I just pull it down to here and that's going to dock it now in the bottom and then you can just resize that and it's just nice to keep an eye on your guiding rather than have PhD 2 on the screen okay well this has been a lot longer than I really wanted it to be and um, it was really just intended for beginners of Nina just to get a quick overview and um, I've been quite happy with it it gets very regular updates um, I did have an issue once or twice and then I applied the update and that seemed to fix it um, but I've had no real um, connection issues with with this software of late um, all seems to be working quite well the flips go well um, the, there is a flat wizard here as well which is similar to flat wizard and in, in other programs you basically you put your your light source on top of your telescope um, it's got a nice feature here which is just slew to the zenith so it'll just point your telescope nice and level and then you put your light source on top and you click go and it will just calculate automatically the time and it'll start taking as many exposures as you've specified here and it puts those by default in a directory called flats as well so it's quite logical the way it names everything um, yeah and then of course you know if you need to take um, darks or whatever you can easily do that as well by just specifying what type of frame you need and again it will name that'll be into your um, file name so it'll be very easy to differentiate so I think in terms of a basic overview of Nina and um, that is probably enough information um, if you've got any questions feel free to put them in the comments um, there's a bunch of information about Nina out there I recommend like I said Patriot Astro is a good one for the auto focusing routine and I also have found um, you know Sue of the Lazy Geek he's got some great information on Nina as well it gets so many updates um, that it's um, you know you tend to find that 
any sort of niggling issues that people are having problems with, they tend to get fixed um, quite quite readily. You know, um, you don't really have to wait long for an update, and they'll usually um, appear up in the top corner here. There'll be like an icon that'll let you know that there's an update ready to install, and it keeps all your settings as well when it does the install. So it keeps all your profiles, which I thought was very good. So there you go. There's Nina, and I hope it helps a bit. Thanks, guys.